Hey, I'm RJ, and I previously modified my espresso machine using Arduino. It's been a couple of years since then, and everything's working great, but I've found another project I'm currently obsessed with. I recently moved to a new apartment, and in the process of attempting to turn it into a smart home, I discovered Home Assistant. Home Assistant is a home automation platform that focuses on local control and privacy. It's free, open source, and it has a huge community of people integrating and building stuff on top of it, so of course, I had to try it out. This is the dashboard I currently have, and I used to view and control everything in my apartment. I'm running a single page setup which I split into the following sections. I have weather here, climate control, networking, power monitoring, device control, security, and media. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. To share my home automation journey, we have to start from the very beginning. To get started, I needed to build a standalone server that will run Home Assistant. I could run it on my Unraid server, but that would mean my devices won't work when I'm doing some maintenance on it. So I've decided to use a Raspberry Pi 5 instead. This will allow me to leave it on indefinitely without worrying too much about interruption or power consumption. I flashed a micro SD card with an operating system. I use the Raspberry Pi Imager for this task because it lets you choose an OS specific to Home Assistant. This saved me a lot of time as I didn't have to configure anything on the terminal. Once I had that running, I could start adding integrations and devices. When I built a new gaming PC, I decided to use my old one as an Unraid server. I've upgraded it with various things like more RAM, more hard drives, and even a 10 gigabit PCIe card to allow me to edit my videos off of it. It's running an old i7-9700K meant for overclocking, so saying that it's overkill for a NAS is an understatement. So for the first integration, I want to start monitoring how much energy my Unraid server uses, so I can potentially optimize the machine for that metric. I picked up this Tapo P110 smart socket with energy monitoring, and it was really easy to add to Home Assistant. I had to use the Tapo app on my iPhone initially to connect the device to Wi-Fi, but once it was configured, it got picked up by my Home Assistant immediately as it supports Tapo integrations out of the box. Yeah, looks like my hunch was right. My Unraid server is consuming a lot of energy, but that's to be expected as it's running my old gaming PC's hardware. I'll make another video to see if I can bring that number down. But for now, let's move on. So before we get to the next integration, I didn't want to leave the Raspberry Pi running naked. And luckily, it has a lot of third-party manufacturers creating various peripherals for it, like this nice looking case. It doesn't fare too well in terms of functionality, as its massive heatsink prevents us from installing top hats, but it looked nice, so I decided to use it. Once everything was installed, Let's boot the Raspberry Pi up to make sure everything still works. Alright, everything looks good. Let's move on to the next integration. When I first viewed this apartment, I fell in love with the massive windows. One thing I didn't account for though, was how hot it gets during the afternoon. Yes, it's beautiful, but the glare is too much and the heat can get unbearable. The apartment had roller blinds installed, and I wondered if it was possible to have a device to control these remotely. I did some research and discovered the Akara roller shade drivers. I picked a couple of them up which will allow me to control the shades at a push of a button. So the shade drivers work fine manually, but there was an issue. I couldn't add them to Home Assistant. If I wanted to control them remotely, I needed an Akara hub to get it to work. I did some research and discovered that Akara devices use a Zigbee module instead of Wi-Fi. Zigbee is a low-power wireless mesh network used to control and monitor battery-powered devices. I thought I was out of luck, but thankfully I found a solution. Home Assistant created SkyConnect, or what's now called ZBT1. It's a dongle that enables Zigbee devices to be integrated into Home Assistant. Exactly what I was looking for. Setting it up was pretty straightforward. It was just a matter of plugging it into one of the free USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. Once I started the server, it got picked up immediately and it showed up in the Discovered tab. Configuration is very easy, and in a matter of minutes, I have my own Zigbee network running with Home Assistant. I started the Zigbee discovery process and put the devices in discovery mode. They showed up immediately on the dashboard. The devices are now integrated into my home network and are ready for use. It was fun testing them out, but I don't want to press a toggle switch on the dashboard every time I want to use them. I want them to automatically close when it gets too hot, 
and open when it starts to cool down. This meant that I needed to integrate sensors into my server. Home Assistant can operate the window blinds on its own by watching a specific data point. This can be done by setting it to work based on time for example, opening and closing it on a specific time frame of the day. But I want it to react depending on how hot it is. That means Home Assistant will need to know the current temperature of the room. Thankfully, a lot of devices exist for this exact purpose. For my use case, I went with the Akara Temperature and Humidity Sensor T1. Adding it was pretty straightforward, as it's also a Zigbee device, so we simply add it through that integration. Once that's done, I was able to see additional stats from the sensor like temperature, pressure, and humidity. The key data point we'll be working off of is temperature, so let's go ahead and create an automation based on that. I've set the automation to close the window when the temperature reaches 26 degrees and if the roller shades are actually open. I implemented the same logic for when opening it up, and all that's left now is to wait for it to get too hot in the room and see if the automation works. I have a few more integrations I want to talk about, and of course, I have yet to discuss how I got my dashboard to look the way it does. I don't want to make this video too long, so just stay tuned for part 2. Thank you for watching.